Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF, first Friday of 2022. That's a good thing. It went fast this week, didn't it? Just want to thank you real quick for those fantastic comments you left on Wednesday's video. Unbelievable. Some of the stories had me rolling and brought tears to my eyes, literally. It was just fantastic, especially with that little price marker. Great stories. Thank you so much for sharing them with me and the rest of our subscribers. Um, for today's video, soldering. Some people have never soldered before, have no idea how to start, would like to get started. It's kind of a mystery. There's nothing to it. Let's get to it real quick. The ins and outs, the very beginning, your first time soldering with success. Now we're going to start by breaking down the individual components of what you need to solder. There are many different types of soldering irons. Uh, this is what they call a pencil type because you hold it as if you were using a pencil. Okay, they also have, uh, they have the big old fashioned types they used to use for like soldering a stained glass and they have solder to soldering, uh, you could use a torch when you're soldering pipe, uh, you could solder uh, handicrafts, metalwork. Um, there's so many different types and uses of solder, but what we're going to talk about is the basic general purpose electronic solder. And for that, the most common type is a pencil type soldering. Now, a lot of them have, uh, temperature controls. A lot of them you buy by wattage, but the general purpose one that we're going to be talking about today is your general purpose soldering iron that usually has replaceable tips. There's usually a screw and then you could pull this out or change it. And uh, we're going to talk about that when we show you the new kit. Next up, we have the solder that we actually are going to use. There are a couple different types, but uh, the main ones that you're going to have to uh, deal with usually are uh, acid core or plumbing solder, which is lead free. All your plumbing solder, you want to have lead free because you don't want that getting into your water supply. So that's why they make it. And it usually has an acid core to uh, clean the pipe better. And uh, for electronics, we use a rosin core, but a lead is okay for electronics. And actually lead makes the solder work so much better. So when you see these numbers here, you'll see a, uh, you know, 60, 40, that's the combination of uh, tin and lead. Okay. So if you see like 50, 50 here, that's uh, not the acetone and AC and automatic transmission fluid. That is 50% tin, 50% lead. So depending on how you mix it up, but 60-40 is basically what a lot of people use. Uh, some people use 63-37. It You know, you're in that range for uh, electronic solder, but you're going to use a lead-based solder. That's what we're going to use. This is meant for pipes, things like that, and handicrafts. And you also need a little bit hotter uh, torches and irons to use this up here. And they usually are a thicker solder. That's how you can tell. The third type of solder you can probably run into is uh, the, the unknown type. You know, they're not marked. You see, they come like this. So sometimes you could look at them and see like this one here, because it's so thin, most likely an electronic solder. Uh, like same here with this, you know, but Solder does, believe it or not, have a life span. So if your solder isn't working too good, it might be old and their flux, some of them have a, a core of flux and that might have dried out. So it's that's why uh, it's not working too Next good. Next up, we have what's called uh, soldering paste or what they call uh, flux. Very important with a lot of applications. When you usually see lead free, it's usually an acid based flux, which is meant for pipes, things like that, for plumbing. We won't be using that. When you see a rosin paste, that's what we're going to be using. That's meant for electronics. This will work good for us. And uh, what this looks like when you open it up, it's just like a kind of a paste and, you know, kind of a goo. It don't have much of a smell until you start burning it. And I'll show you how this, this is very You're important. going to want a small fan, if you can, and not pointing towards you, pointing away from you to draw some of the fumes that come off the solder, because they always seem to find their way into your nose. So if you have a small fan, just turn it backwards to you, and it'll, it will suck the fumes Lastly, away. Lastly, you might not think this is important, but it is really important. Always have something to hold your soldering iron. They used to have these little metal clips that you can use, but something to hold your soldering iron. This is a nice holder. A little sponge. You dampen a sponge helps clean the tip or a piece of steel wool that you could wipe the tip on when it gets hot and then put it in here so it doesn't burn anything and also keep lets the iron maintain its heat so 
Uh, you know, it's an overlooked accessory, but important to have. Okay, so here is the kit as received from Amazon. And uh, here's what we have here was uh, in included. Gives you a, uh, a detailed instruction manual. <laughs> manual. And uh, here we have the soldering iron. It is a pencil style. This one it does have an adjustment here. And you can see here that it does have the temperature ranges on how accurate it is an on off switch. Again, we haven't tried it. It comes with an assortment of tips that you could use. You could see here different tips. Obviously, you would use, you know, for larger work, uh, you would use the larger tips for smaller work, like, you know, working on circuit boards. But this is the tip that came on it. We'll use this one here. And it comes with uh, some soldering paste. Again, this is meant for mostly electronics, so it's going to be that type. It came with high quality, and you can, you, the reason you can tell this is high quality is because it's written high quality on there. And it, this is a, a soldering wire that you have. It's, it's nice and thin, which helps it melt easier. And you have your, uh, well, I guess this is a sponge. Okay, look at this. So I wonder if this is one of them sponges that expand. I remember those as kids, you would get them little things and you all of a sudden it would blow up. I like those compressed. So I think that's what that is. And this is a, the stand. So I guess this needs a little bit of assembling, but believe it or not, you laugh, but that's all you need, but it's important. I have a piece of cardboard down here just as a work surface. And let me show you how this comes apart because this is a good time to check it out before it obviously gets hot. But if you wanted to disassemble this or change the tips, this screws off like this. There's a little collar here. You loosen that up. This is a just a sleeve that goes over the top. And there is how you change your tips. Your tips are hollow. This is a heating element. The tip goes over the heating element like this. And then the little sleeve fits over that and then screws down here. And you want everything to be nice and tight when you start because it's got to be tight in order to get a good heat transfer okay make sure everything's tight now the first thing we're going to do is we have to tin the tip it's called tinning the tip i think this is already pre-tinned does that look pre-tinned to you it might be but you have to do it anyway you never even before you plug it in for the first time so we're going to wrap some solder around here we're going to dip it in a little bit of flux and uh, wrap some solder around here and tin the Okay, tip. to tin the tip, initially we're gonna stick it into here, into the flux. We're gonna wrap a small piece of solder around the tip, just like that. And we're gonna turn the iron on for the first time and let that melt. I have this turned up here to the max setting. And then uh, we'll turn this on and wait until it melts. Oh, one other thing I bought for this demonstration was this little pair of hands. This is always helpful when you're soldering because, you know, to try and hold things. That's always a, a problem. So sometimes you got to break down and buy one of these accessories. This is a steel plate, uh, has some rubber feet on the bottom, which holds it steady. These are magnetic. You don't even have to, you know, use this plate, but you put them on the plate here. It comes with alligator clips with some uh, rubber uh, little... Uh, feet over the, the jaws so it don't mess up the wire and that'll just hold the wire while you solder it should make for a better video that's okay let's get to soldering first of all we're going to try this uh, thin wire first of all and sometimes when you you don't know if a wire is clean or not when it's copper is super bright and shiny when it's clean okay so here i am i'm scraping off some of this uh this wire here and you can see the difference here this is now this wire was covered with a vinyl covering but it still can tarnish underneath and you can see the difference between the two and what happens is that tarnish makes it much more difficult to solder and that's where the flux comes in the flux will eliminate that and give the the solder a molecular bond with the metal and if it isn't a, a good soldering joint, they call that a cold soldering joint, what happens is, you know, they could fall off. So we're going to uh, twist these together, and I'll show you what how to solder. Okay, first off, let's take a little bit. We just twisted two cop, a piece of copper wire, twisted it together. We're going to dip it into the flux. Okay, just push it into the flux. I like to use a little extra flux. You can always wipe it off with isopropyl alcohol if you feel that it's uh, going to give you issues later on. Let's uh, hope that focus is in good. I have the uh, the soldering iron turned up pretty hot. I like to work with a hot iron because I work quick. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to touch it down here because we have the flux on. Work our way up the iron. You can see that's very hot. And there we go. Look at that. We're going to work our way under it now touching the solder with 
at the same time. And there we go. That's a, a beautiful solder joint. Flip off any excess solder. Wipe it onto the sponge real quick. Okay, make sure any dirt is off the uh, little added solder onto the tip and put this back in the holder. Flip off any excess and put it back in the holder. And there we have a solder connection. That's exactly what you want, okay? Look at that, both sides. That's a beautiful connection. It's strong. And that's about 90% of what you're going to do with small electronics, things like that. But let's try some other now, Sometimes you might want a tin. And when I say tin, that means put some solder on the end of a wire to bend it around to make a connection. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to put some, uh, again, some flux onto it, okay? I like to use some flux because this is older wire. This wire is 25 years old or so, and it does get tarnished on there. And uh, again, we have the iron on a fairly hot setting, okay? And uh, what we're going to do, again, work in from the bottom up here. You touch the solder to the iron and then to the flux. Let that make a little bridge. Heat up the copper. You're touching it to the copper. You're touching the iron to the copper, feeding the solder. Working your way up, get underneath. You don't want to go too close to the insulation because uh, sometimes that'll melt the insulation on some cheaper wire. But you see, we're underneath, on top, and there you go. There's a nice solder joint. Again, flip off any excess solder on here. Wipe your tip off on the sponge. You can even wipe it off on a piece of uh, steel wool here. You want that tip to be nice and shiny and stay tinned. A little bit extra solder on here and put it back into the holder waiting for the job coming up. Let's take a look at this here. That's a nice tin joint, right? That's a nice solder joint. And why you would use something like this? You to wrap this around a screw, you would just take some needle nose pliers like this and wrap it like this. And you would make a, a perfect... Uh, little joint that you could put a screw around it and it won't fray the edges so that's one reason you would tin the edge of some wire sometimes. Okay, next up let's say you had to make a structural repair we had to uh these are you know coat hanger first thing you would do is you would wipe this you know sand these down and then wrap it with a small piece of copper wire and then solder that and let me show you how that okay, works. Okay we wrap some thin copper wire around that uh entire piece there now, you could have went all the way from end to end, but I'm just showing you what you could do. Now, we turned the heat all the way up because we know this is going to absorb a lot of heat here. You know, that's a big piece, but we have it at 450 degrees. I'm just seeing if we can uh, get this to do any kind of solder. Or is it going to suck the heat out of this iron? Now, normally, this little soldering iron, this is only 60 watts. This is uh, a little bit small for this operation. For a craft operation like this, you would want a larger iron, a hotter iron. But I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with the performance of this small iron and how it works. And you can see here how that it is, after a little bit, wicking into the area and creating a great bond. And I'm uh, very satisfied with this little unit in whole. Okay, there we go. That looks nice. Okay, there we did our little repair there. And I have to say, I'm very impressed, you know, with that small soldering iron. It's very strong. That's solid. And there, that's just coat hanger. But you could see if you just use a little patience, right amount of heat and a little copper wire to wrap around, you can make some serious repairs. Okay, so in closing, I hope that gives you some confidence if you've never soldered before. You saw I did it start to finish with this simple, inexpensive kit from Amazon. It's well worth it, much better than trying to get grandpa's old soldering iron that might be damaged and getting it to work in some old solder that's worn out. You, you're nothing but heartache. So try, if you haven't tried it, start with a new kit. I, I'm seeing you'll have the same results I did, guaranteed. And uh, also, I want to say before we go, um, you know, our good friend John Crane from the, he has a channel right on with John Crane, fantastic channel, great guy. He just started another channel called Right On Pizza. He's been going around, uh, he's been doing a lot on the West Coast, going to different pizzerias and, uh, and trying them out and rating them. I got to tell you, I'm having a lot of fun watching it. Everybody who watches it is. And uh, you got to go over there and subscribe. Check out that channel and uh, watch John go through all these different pizzerias over there because he's from the East Coast. And the one thing we have on the East Coast is 
we have the, some of the best pizza in the world uh, on the East Coast here, New York, New Jersey, uh, un unparalleled. But, you know, he's finding some really good ones around the country. So go check out that channel and uh, tell my I sent you and say hello. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye now. Hello, boys.